Hi, Chris here from the EQMod project. Uh, this video is looking at a PEC prep, and we're going to look at the uh, frequency spectrum. Now, I've got my data already loaded into PEC prep. Uh, this is the periodic error analysis tab. You can see there is actually a, a frequency spectrum plotted on this screen, uh, but it's of pretty low resolution. It's really only there to help you with the, the smoothing uh, of, of the raw data. Uh, we have another tab called the Frequency Spectrum, which provides a much more detailed look at uh, the frequencies or, or, or periods of signals that are present within your data. Now, any smoothing that you do on, on this screen uh, has be bears no relation to what's used for the Frequency Spectrum Analysis. That only uses the raw data, so it's always looking at the raw data. Let's click it. Okay. Uh, Pen size down. What you see when you uh, go onto this screen is a, a, a graph that has a relative magnitude as the y axis, so the uh, tallest peak will be at level 100. Um, and on the x axis, we've got uh, time, so this is telling us the period of these particular signals. As you can see, there are a number of peaks uh, present in here. Um, there's a, 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 a nice little cursor you can move about and measure things if, 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 if you want to do that. A um, couple of controls, one to, to zoom in on the y-axis, uh, another one that zooms in on the x-axis, and one to scroll the x-axis. I'm just going to pull these things out so we can see our data. See all of it. You can also scroll by holding uh, a mouse button down and moving off the screen, as you can see. Um, okay. As you can see, I've got a magnitude filter applying at the moment. If I take that off, we see all of all of the data we've 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 captured. It's showing all of the frequencies that are present in it, and a lot of this is very. Uh, small magnitude and is just cluttering things up as far as our understanding of, of, of the waveform. It's, it's a good idea if we, if we can just filter that out um, and then we can see the, the, the main peaks that are existing. You see? Um, so that's what the magnitude filter does. The period cutoff filter also lets us um, pre-filter the data. As you can see the, the, the data actually extends into very uh, low frequencies. Um, I'm only really interested in things that go down to the worm frequency. That's that's all I'm really expecting to see in my mount. So by using this, I can set a cutoff at this level here. Um, and again, it just takes it. It will speed pack prep up. It's not having to process a, a lot of signals that we're not interested in. Uh, you can also display the graph as, as just peaks only, if, if, if you prefer to see it that way. Um, I like to see the continuous graph, but um, it's entirely up to you. On the right here, we have a list for, for the data that's currently visible. Um, we see uh, all the peaks listed, what their relative magnitude is, what the phase is that's associated with them. Um, so if I filter this, you can see that the amount of peaks, the number of peaks in this, this box here disappear uh, get or get reduced. Um, and you can press this calculator button here and it will go away and it will calculate uh, what the periodic error peak to peak in arc seconds is for each one of those signals. So it's, it's telling us that the 483.3 the second signal um, is actually contributing a, a, a peak to peak error of, of 8 arc seconds towards our a total um, periodic error. Fast Fourier transforms can have some amount of pre-processing on them uh, to give better resolution of uh, the frequencies, or in our case period, uh, the magnitude and the phase data. One of those controls is, is, is this resolution control here, and 
what that does is at the uh, the, the higher the period or, or the longer the period the, the lower the frequency the less resolution uh, we can resolve the actual frequencies or the peaks so in order to get more resolution we can use this control but it has a downside and that is that you lose uh, the range of, of uh, frequencies that you can see so if I bump this one up to say 10 seconds you'll see that we've now lost a peak from down the bottom here that, that the lowest that we're, we're now seeing is, is somewhere down at 16.2 um, prior to that we had a peak down here um, so moving that up to there I've, I've lost that from my data now um, but I am actually getting a a better resolution for these uh, low frequency peaks so you can see that um, I'm now resolving this peak here as being 479 seconds instead of 483 it was before and we know that the actual peak for, the, for that signal is actually 478.7 so it's getting pretty close now um, so by using this tool you can get increased resolution on these low frequency uh, data at the expense of losing the range uh, of, uh, of your high frequency so you know you 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 move this slider about depending on what you're interested in if you're interested in these low frequency things wind it up if you if you want to see the high frequency data you'll have to wind it down the other control that that, that we have is this window type and, and windows uh, again can uh, improve the uh, resolution of frequency or magnitude uh, or, or or phase calculations um, there's a whole load of different ones uh, Hamming, Hanning, Flattop, Nuttall, Blackman, Blackman Harris, Blackman Nuttall. Um, they all have various pros and cons. Some are better at frequency resolution, some are better at magnitude resolution. It depends what you're interested in. Um, at the moment, we're on non, which gives us the best possible uh, frequency resolution. If we switch to Hamming, Hamming you'll see that uh, the period is is perhaps not as accurate as it was before um, but the actual magnitudes now will be a little bit more accurate um, again it depends what you're interested in seeing you'll notice in in this box we have a thing called significant mount periods and this all comes out of a, a, a text file so we can add as many a, a other entries that we want to this and this provides a quick way of identifying what these peaks actually are so I can put a tick on here for the worm drive. Uh, I can see if there's any transfer gear signal in there. Transfer gear second harmonic. A worm bearing. Doesn't look like there's a worm bearing in there. Stepper gear. Mm, could be. Um, the gear mesh period. That's a 10.2. Now I know there was a 10.2, so if I wind this down, we can see that, that corresponds with that peak down there. Um, second harmonic, third harmonic, mostly things that are probably going to be harmonics of the worm, they, they normally are, um, as, as you can see. Uh, these are colour coded, so anything that is in green is, is, has been assigned to, to the worm drive, um, anything that's in blue looks as though it's the, the transfer gear. Again, that's all user definable within the text file that's used to, to add these uh, periods for each mount type. You can turn them all off and turn them all on if, if, if you want. Um, the other thing we can do is save one particular bit of analysis a, as a reference spectrum. And then at a later time we can lo load that back. So if we're making mechanical changes we can take do a kind of a before and after and have a look and see how things have changed. Uh, I should have one. Uh, available, one called ref1. Let me load that up. And you can see, I'm just going to zoom in a bit. And move our view window up so we get a better look. 
You can see the reference is, is, is shown in blue. This, this is why the, we have different sized pens so that we can um, easily distinguish uh, what the data is doing. As you can see, uh, this was also for from an EQ6 mount because the, 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 the characteristic peaks are still there. Um, although on our reference, uh, we don't have any transfer gear signal. Um, we obviously have less, a lower amplitude for the worm gear second harmonic. Um, a greater amplitude for the transfer gear second harmonic, um, interestingly enough. But that's just a way in which you can compare how your spectrum is changing if you've made mechanical changes. Um, as you can see, you can d different ways of displaying that reference data. You can just show it as peaks if, 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 if that makes it easier to see. As with most of the graphs in PEC prep, you can uh, right click and add labels if you want to annotate things um, but this graph also has another sp a fe feature where you can uh, press the mouse wheel down I don't know if I mentioned that earlier and, and that will put a, 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 a label on there telling you the period associated with that point on the graph. Um, and of course you can sa save as bitmaps if you wish. Okay, that is essentially I think all that we need to cover on here. You can turn the, the key off. Um, oh, the, the, the reference spectrums, you can load more than one. You can load a whole, a whole stack of them if you want, in which case the, there's a little key that appears down here. Um, you can turn the grids off if if, if you want to, I don't know why you would really want to. All of this data can be saved uh, as a text file. Uh, you may want to analyze it in, in other things. Um, you can also then load it as a simulation into uh, PECPREP itself. Okay, that's, that's pretty much all there is to say on, on this tab.